Okay, this video is going to demonstrate how to implement a basic stack in C Sharp. A reminder, a stack is a data structure that is composed of nodes where all operations take place from the top of the stack. So when we implement this in C Sharp, we're going to implement uh, three different classes. Uh, the first class is going to be the overall stack management class. This is what's going to implement the logic of the stack. We're also going to implement a node class, which is going to store the uh, data and linking item for the, uh, for the node. And then we'll also implement a data class, which will be the wrapper for our uh, object that we're going to store inside of our stack. So in order to uh, begin the object design process, we have to decide if there are properties associated with our stack class that we need. And overall, the stack really just needs to maintain one piece of information, which is where is the top of the stack? So we will have a property for our stack that is a reference variable to a node. Uh, effectively, this is points to the very first node in our uh, stack. The methods we're going to implement are effectively an add method, a remove method, and there's also a unique thing with stacks. It's called peak, which uh, allows us to look at the top item on the stack but not remove it from the stack. So these will be implemented as the methods push, pop, and peak, which are the traditional names for the um, for those processes for a stack. So let's talk through the process of pushing and popping before we get ready to actually write the code and see if we can develop an algorithm for how these processes operate. So here I have before you an empty stack. It is a top that points to nothing or null. This is the state that the stack would be in when it is first created. So if I want to add something to the stack, the first thing I need to do is I need to instantiate a node that is going to uh, be my new uh, item on my stack. So if I instantiate a node, I'm going to end up with a pointer to that node. And we'll call that pointer temp node. And so this points to our brand new node. And I would put in the data item uh, for that particular node. And the next pointer of this node is pointing to null. Uh, it doesn't point anywhere. In order to attach this to the stack, I am going to need to move my top pointer to point to the same thing that temp node. So I assign top to temp node. So now the node is being pointed to by both top and temp node, which means I can get rid of temp node and top can now successfully point to my new node. The thing to remember on all these data structures is you always have to make sure that something is pointing to the object or else it's lost. That is a special case where the original top is empty. So from then on, whenever we add something to the uh, list, or I mean the stack, there's already going to be uh, an item in it, which means that we can't lose that previous item or all previous items. So what we will do is we will attach the next of our new node to the top of of the stack. So when I instantiate this temp node, I'm going to point the temp node.next to wherever top is located. Now that node is still attached. So I can move top safely and I still can get to that next node. So I move top, point it to temp node like we did before. I now have two things pointing to the new top of the stack. So I no longer need temp node. I can now use top to point to the new node that we just created. So here you can see that both of these nodes are accessible to us. We still know where they are, uh, but we don't necessarily have something that directly points to all nodes in the stack. So our algorithm would be for pushing or adding to the stack is we create a new node reference called temp node, and we check to see if the top is null and if it is, then we just set top equal to temp node. If the top is not null, then we also need to take the uh, pointer of temp node.next and point it to or set it equal to the top reference variable. 
and then we can move top. So the opposite of pushing is popping. How do we get an item out of the list or the stack? I'm sorry, I keep calling it a list, it's a stack. In our case, how do we get that top item off of the stack? So we point a new pointer to it, which we'll call popped. And we can now, since we have a new pointer pointing to that object, we can now move top to the top.next. In other words, go down one in the list because this top one, I keep saying list, go down one in the stack uh, because the top one is coming off. So the next item in the stack is now going to be the new top. Now that I have a the popped pointer uh, pointing to this node that has been released, I can disconnect it from the stack by setting the next pointer of popped to null. So now I have a pointer that points to my new object that's been removed from the stack and I have the stack still pointed to by top. This process would be repeated as I pop things off the stack. So popping is set a new reference to the, uh, set the popped reference to top, then set top to top.next, that moves down one in the stack, and then set the popped.next to null so that it is no longer attached to the stack. Those are our two main methods and we are going to jump over to Visual Studio and implement this in C Sharp. Okay, here we have a little uh, C Sharp program that we're going to use to demonstrate the building of our stack object. And uh, in this program, I have created the uh, data item class the stacks class and the node class and we will fill in the details for these items uh, in order to build our stack so here on the data item i'm just going to use this as a wrapper for whatever data i might want to store in my um, node so uh, let's do something simple like put in just a string so we're just going to use public uh, items here so i'll do a string and we'll call this name and to make this a little bit more interesting, let's also make it a composite item and say that we also have a um, string and we'll put that in as city. So there we have a couple properties that we're gonna be storing for this particular object in our node. So we'll instantiate copies of this data item class. Now let's hop over to uh, node and I need to define what a node looks like. Well, a node is first off going to contain something that is uh, a data item. So I'm going to put in uh, a data item and we'll call this data. And then uh, nodes have to link to other nodes using reference variables. So we'll put in a private and this particular item is going to be a, a reference to another node and so we will call this next. So this item is going to be a reference to connect to another node. So there's my there's my node um, object. So now let's hop over to stack and stack yeah, we have to keep track of top uh, but the, the good thing about top is the only person that, or the only thing that needs to know uh, what top is, is the stack itself. So we'll make this a reference to a node, and it's going to be called top. And uh, we need some methods, and the methods we're going to use are um, going to be uh, push. Oh, it's going to return void push and push is expecting to receive uh, we could do this two ways we could either instantiate just the data item and pass it into the push the push then creates the node for us and attaches it or we could create nodes ourselves and with the data item already in it and pass those into push and in my case I prefer I think to just send data so we are going to expect a data item and we will just call it D and from that we will build a node. 
So in order to do that, we need a temporary node. So I'm going to say that I have a node of called temp node. And this is going to be a new node. So I instantiate that node. Now I'm going to uh, set temp node. Oh, I need to create a new. Oh, no, I'm going to instantiate that from outside. So uh, my data item D now needs to be placed into the temp node. So temp node dot data is going to equal D. So now the item that I've passed in is going to be placed in the node. And I don't, when I push, uh, I have to decide whether um, I need to point next to something. And it turns out that even if it's null, even if, if top is null, I can always say that temp node dot next. Uh, well, so temp node dot next is going to equal top. So if the very first item in the list is, if this is the very first item in the list, uh, top is currently null, which is fine because temp node dot next would be null for the very first item in the list. So this, this will execute correctly without having to require a special case. If temp, if next was not a uh, null, then this is what we'd want to link it to anyway. So I, th I think we're good this way. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we need to do? Um, we now need to move top to point to our new temp node. So we've completed our algorithm for push. Let's uh, work on pop. So uh, pop is going to be a function that's going to return something to us. And the thing it's going to return is a data item. And but it doesn't expect anything because popping only ever takes place by looking at the top item on the on the stack. So OK, so we need to uh, test to see if there's anything in the list or the stack to even be popped out. So I'm going to start off with a test for if top is equal to null. And what should I do if top is equal to null? I should just return null. Nothing to pop, nothing to see here. So if I get past that, I mean, I know that there's something in that item in the stack. So now I should be able to pop it off. So I need a place to put it. So I need a node pointer. Uh, actually, I'm, yeah, sure. I need a node pointer. Uh, so I'm going to call this popped. And it's going to equal top. Because that's the one that's going to be coming off. And in our algorithm, I now need to move uh, top to point to where um, top dot next points to. So if there's another item in the stack farther down, I now need to move top down one. So top dot next points to the next item in the stack if it exists. If not, it will be null, which will indicate that the stack is now empty. So top will take on that value. So we're all set there. And uh, now that that item is no longer, the one pointed to by popped is no longer attached to the list, I want to clear out that, uh, that next link that it might have. So I would say popped.next is equal to null. This way, uh, if I'm throwing away stuff later, there's not some pointer that's left around pointing to it uh, so that garbage collection can take care of getting rid of those uh, unused objects. And then uh, finally, I need to return back the answer, the data item that's contained inside this popped item. So I would return back to the call the uh, popped.data. And there we go. Pop is complete. Last thing we need to do is we need to put together the uh, peak uh, function. And remember, peak is designed to give you a copy of the data in the top item without removing it from the stack. So it's fairly simple. We just need to return the uh, top top dot data. And there's peak. So our class has been built. So what we want to do now is jump over to our main program and test it out. So we'll put in some test code here. You can see that uh, basically I create a stack and a data item that I'm going to use. I push a couple things on the stack here. 
And you'll notice that I'm using an inline um, constructor here to uh, construct the object and push it onto the stack. So I had to add a constructor over here to my data item class in order to accept those two inputs. So that was a little change from what we did before. And then here I look at the top item on the stack, which should be Joe. And then here I pop off Joe and pop off Nancy. And then I write the second item that we pull, pulled off the stack, which in this case should be Nancy. So if we run this, we should see Joe and Nancy on the screen. There it is, Joe, Nancy, it did what we expected. And so we have a functional stack that we can push things and pop things off of. And uh, this, this stack class could be developed to a full-blown uh, functional stack uh, with a lot of other functions like clearing and emptying the stack out and things like that and making it a little bit more flexible in terms of what kinds of things can be stored on it. Now, this was developed in order to teach how we can use uh, C-sharp classes to build dynamic data structures. Uh, in reality, if I was going to be utilizing a stack, I would probably just turn to the .NET uh, stack object. But this uh, allows us to see how uh, dynamic data structures are built, and it can be applied to uh, types of data structures that are not available in the .NET framework.